chilling new details this morning about the gunman behind the ambush in Dallas. Investigators searching 25-year-old Micah Johnson's home found bomb-making materials, rifles, ammunition, and a personal journal of combat tactics. I want to bring in Dallas County Executive Clay Jenkins. Mr. Jenkins, thank you for joining us at this very, very difficult time in your city. Help us, walk us through the last 24 hours as it relates to Micah Johnson. Have you learned anything new about this man? We've learned that he, ha he was amassing a capability to cause even more mayhem than he uh, did cause. Uh, he was amassing bomb making materials. Uh, we've released some more information from his journal uh, showing that he was uh, planning for a long time very deliberate in his uh, desire to kill as many people as he could. And then he used this uh, pop-up protest uh, as an opportunity to carry out a plan. Um, it's, it's horrific and sad that he murdered five officers and injured uh, civilians and more officers. Um, but at the same time, uh, I, in some way, I'm thankful that he was not able to uh, make a large number of improvised explosives and injure even more innocent people and even more uh, law enforcement heroes. Then you agree with the police chief who said that Mr. Johnson had even bigger plans. What could they have been? Uh, well, um, I'm sorry, did, was the, the question what could they said, have been? The said he had even bigger plans than this attack. What did he have in store? Well, he had bomb making material and uh, in, in uh, conversations towards the end with our negotiators, he said he had bombs all over downtown and we wouldn't, wouldn't find them until they exploded. Now, we cleared downtown largely with uh, dogs. We haven't found any bombs, but um, all this indicates that the bomb making materials that were found at his Mesquite home uh, were intended to make improvised explosive devices and um, that he, he planned to, to uh, hurt as many people as he could. Since he came into this crime of opportunity with this uh, fast uh, set up uh, peaceful protest, he wasn't able to get any bombs uh, made or in place, but he um, was able to get his rifle and, and uh, kill a lot of uh, heroes and, a lot, and injure some innocent civilians. I know there's no official statement, but as the chief of police told us, the gunman had scrawled across the wall behind him in the parking garage where he was killed the letters RB. To the best of your understanding knowledge, what do you think RB stands for? We don't, we don't know at this point what RB stands for. The profilers will take that piece of information and a lot of other information, and they're trying to draw a picture of that. But what we think is important now is how we all move forward um, as a community. I think there's a better sense here. Uh, some of the buildings are back open. There's traffic now behind me. And um, we're moving towards uh, pushing for more compassion and more respect for one another. In the end, that is what is going to be the legacy of this man's act of hate. It's not going to tear us further apart it's going to bring us closer together. Does it make it more difficult because Texas is an open carry state for those police officers to do their job? Because one would argue Thursday night at the protest, it was a very confusing time to understand who the shooter was and what his intentions were when there were a number of people carrying weapons. Well, I think that the, the main confusion for us as far as the, um, the danger was the fact that he was using shoot and move tactics and, and it appeared that there might be more than one gunman triangulating on our officers. Um, the, the fact that there were uh, marchers with long guns in the, uh, in the procession, uh, it was a, a, a relatively to that, it was a minor complication because we had to detain those people and that took away resources that could have been used for something else. Um, you know, but the, the biggest problem that we had with him was that he was using shoot and move. He was on top of us. He was uh, above us and uh, he was shooting us in the back. And you mentioned how the community is responding now. Talk to us about what it's like. This needs to be a time when the city of Dallas, the state of Texas can come together. Why do you feel confident that will happen? It's a very strained and tense time in this country. 
It is. You know, Dallas is a place of compassion. We showed that when we invited the unaccompanied minors here in the way that we dealt with Ebola, in the way that we've become a diverse and multi multicultural melting pot. Um, and I just we can do this. Um, we can show more respect and more compassion to each other. We can see things through each other's perspective, and we've got to do that. We've got to flip the switch and look at it through the perspective of the other person. Uh, that's got to be our legacy coming from this. This person wanted to tear us apart. Um, let's flip the switch and, and draw closer together because no, no family um, should worry if their loved one's going to come home from work. No family should have to teach their kids a different set of rules to interact with the police. No one should wonder if when their teenagers go out, if they'll be coming home. You know, it's it's time to, to, to make a difference in this country and not have the same conversations we've had since I was a kid, and now I'm getting to be a pretty old man. No family should be subjected to those tensions, no doubt. Thank you so much. Again, so sorry for what the city of Dallas is going through. Dallas County Executive Clay Jenkins. And right now, we're showing you some live...